Hello and welcome to Geeky Bit. Today we're doing something a little different. As we move on to Season 2 of our Tech History series, we're going to be winding down to only have 24 episodes a year. So as we have more room for more episodes, we are phasing in different series. This one is going to be one of our new tutorial videos. We're going to be talking about how to make a retro Wi-Fi serial modem. So you might be going, what in the world is a retro Wi-Fi modem? Well, it's a serial device that lets you make your computers go online, particularly to connect to BBSs. It's not readily made for connecting you to the internet and in, say the way of a modern computer, but through certain things you can set it up to communicate with your own private PPP server so you can connect to things like websites. So to build this device, we are going to need a few things. First, we need a serial adapter. Next, we need an ESP8266. It'll be the brains of the operation. Then you'll need some wire and, of course, a soldering iron and, as well, some solder. An additional thing you may need if you're going to use a Macintosh is this cable right here as it converts the standard 9-pin serial to something a Macintosh can use. And lastly, we'll need to download the Arduino IDE because it's something we'll need to program the ESP8266. Okay, once we have Arduino installed, we're going to want to go to Tools, to Board Manager, right there, and then we want to type in ESP... 8266 and then we would install this package here I've already installed it as you can see you can update it if you have it already or you can click install if you don't and then that's it all right once you've done that I'm gonna show you how I have mine set up under tools as you can see this is the different settings I have you can pause this anytime in the video if you want to set it to the same settings I have for my ESP 8266. And that's pretty much it. Okay, here we are at the GitHub that we need for the software for the ESP8266. We click on code and download zip. Then we click save file as or open. Either one will work. And then here we have this. We're going to go ahead and do some things real quick. So we'll drag it over to the desktop. And then once we have it copied, we're going to rename it. So what we do here is we just type in here, get rid of that, and then we will have it renamed. All right, now we have it renamed, we're opening it up. And then we go to Z modem and then we scroll down and we will want to open up this file right there. Once it's open up, we go to sketch and then we go to verify compile. And then here it will be compiling. And it'll take a little bit of time, but we want to do this to make sure it gets built and there are no issues. As you can see, it's almost done. Any day now, just about there. And done. So, normally once that's done, we go back to sketch and then just upload to the ESP device. So right here is a completed example of what it will look like. So now let's talk about how to wire it up. So instead of showing a low res or even high res video of me doing this, I figured stills would work the best. So let's get orientated here. On our right, we have the ESP device. And on the left, we have the serial TTL device. So this next part you can either do by soldering or using wires to attach to the pin headers. All right, let's talk about power first. So the TTL device can take three volts or five volts, and the ESP device can put out three volts and five volts. However, three volts is what all the pins are compatible with. So we will be using three volts. So in this example, you would take the 3V3 off of the ESP device and hook that up to the VCC pin on the TTL device. Next, we want to hook up ground so that it has power. To do this, we hook up the pin that says G on the ESP device to the pin that says G and D on the TTL device. This next part 
can differ from ESP to ESP and TTL device to TTL device. So the next part, we hook up the RX pin on the ESP device to the TXD pin on the TTL device, and then the TX pin on the ESP to the RX D pin on the TTL device. If we wired it up right and we got our software copied over, then we should be done and we should have a retro Wi Fi modem or a RS232 to Wi Fi modem in this case. So let's go ahead and test it on a computer. In this video, I'm going to be using Zterm on a Macintosh LC2. So we go ahead and double click on Zterm to open it up. And then once we have it open, we will be doing some things. Okay, so we go up to settings and then we go to connection. Then under connection, we ensure that the data rate is 1200. We can change it later, but we have to program it. We click OK. And then we will go to settings and go to modem preferences. Now normally something else is here, but I put ATI as that is our status, and we select the port that we're supposed to have, in this case, modem port. So ATI is already in the terminal window, and we can hit enter, and we can see, yes, it indeed is working. And that's pretty much it. Now you can go to the GitHub to find out more information on commands you can enter. Okay, you followed the video to this point, but for some reason your retro Wi-Fi modem isn't working. Well, let's do some troubleshooting. The first thing let's talk about are two of the wires we hooked up to the TTL device. You see, not every TTL device is the same, nor every ESP device. So sometimes when they name the connections, they're not right. So the first thing we want to try is to change the pin from the RXD to TXD and vice versa. So if you're having trouble programming the ESP8266, I recommend looking at the guide that I have in the description down below, as it is the same guide I used to program my ESP. ESP8266. So next, let's talk about the ESP8266. Not all of them work with the same configuration and settings in the Arduino IDE. In fact, some of them even require different setup steps and uh, add-ons in Arduino's IDE. So you may have to Google your model of ESP8266 to make sure it is set up for use with the Arduino IDE. Lastly, if you're still having issues, or it's something that I didn't talk about, I recommend taking a look at the GitHub for the software, or taking a look at the text guide for how to set up a retro Wi-Fi modem, as these are the resources I used to make this video, and ultimately it's how I was able to get mine set up. Again, those guides in the description are very detailed and have a lot more information than I go over in this video, so they may be able to help you. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. And if so, feel free to click that like button. And if you aren't subscribed so already, feel free to do so. And if you'd like to get notifications of when I do new videos, click that bell button.